I'm, I'll hide, I'll download it, hide it away on YouTube, um, and um, and you can just get access to that wherever you want. Excellent, great. So I don't know if Gillian's uh, joining or not, um, but I, but I think we we can just crack on. Okay, no, that's great. This morning will be kind of more of a deep dive right the way through the sort of recruitment part uh, from sort of, you know, the the process, the internal process of of approval of a new headcount right the way through to how that then gets put up on your own website or onto a job board and then the sort of workflow of how that how the successful candidate becomes an employee, but also what happened to what what you can do with the people that aren't successful and the sort of messaging flow that go that can go back out to them. Great. Super, yeah. Nicoletta. So let's uh, start or I will share my screen. So uh, first we are going to see some real life examples which uh, actually demonstrates that the look and feel of uh, the page can be configured to match that on your website. We are now in Grant Thornton's page. We can see that on the upper level of our screen we can put uh, logos or videos and beneath uh, you can enter a text that you wish. It is customized so you can write whatever you want here. And then we can see the available job openings. So if I want to learn more about a vacancy, I will simply select read more. And I can see that this vacancy fits my uh, um, experience, let's say, and my academic background. So I will click on apply now. Now we can move to um, another example. Now this is Ancus, Ancus Soft Fruits, and we can see that uh, we can display the open vacancies on the website in a frame. As we can see here, again, if I want to see more, I can see that um, by clicking read more, and then I can uh, select the vacancy and then apply now. And now we can go in our demos page as another example. We can see that this page, this page is uh, simpler. We can see that this is. Um, we, it's a different layout. We can select the accountant, for example, and again, we can click apply now. Now, um, if we go back to the Grant Thornton's page, we can see that there are five sections here and that we can compare these um, sections and fields with the one that we have in our demos page. So the point here is that the sections and the fields are configurable, and that means that you will decide which fields you want to enter. So if we go now to in our demos page, we can see four sections, we can see different uh, fields entered. So some companies request a lot of information while others may just need, you know, the just the basic information from the app for the applicants. So um, yeah, is user definable and you can also add some extra questions for um, a specific vacancy if you like by using the surveys module, which is an optional module. Now, when the applicant completes all the required fields uh, at the end of the form filling process, the system will ask the applicant, the candidate, to supply a password um, so as to create an applicant account and he will be able to log in back again and edit his personal details and uh, um, attach any additional document and so on. And also when the applicant will submit the form, uh, he will automatically receive an email with a text that you will decide again uh, the context of this text, which will inform him that he will that he has uh, successfully submitted his application. Now we can go into the system. Uh, this is John, he's the HR of this company. And let's see what uh, we need to configure in order to um, see our available vacancies on our, on our website. So first of all, let's select the recruitment from the menu on the left. And let's 
uh, select vacancies. So from here we can create uh, any number of vacancies. So I will, uh, I can create a new record, but for now I will just open an uh, already existing one. So I will select this one. So what the HR administrator needs to do is to fill this form with all the necessary details. So we have the description, uh, which is the title of the vacancy, as this will be uh, appearing on our website. Uh, we have the position, and this is the internal position name. So we have to configure this list first before um, we create a vacancy. And then we have the vacancy type, and the, these are system values. We have three options. We have the internal, and that means that this vacancy will be published uh, only in the system and only existing employees will be able to apply. Then we have the external, which means that this vacancy will be published only in the website. And then we have the open, which means that it will be published in both in the system and in the uh, website. Then we have the job type. Up. Here it is. Again, this is uh, user definable. You will decide um, the job type uh, list. For example, we have full time, part time, internship and so on. And then we have the vacancy category. Again, this can be uh, defined by you. And you will select the appropriate for this vacancy uh, category. And then we you can enter the budgeted amount for this vacancy. And then we have the assigned to field. So all applications entered will be automatically assigned to the person, to the employee uh, selected. If you have, if you cooperate with any agency, then you can um, select this agency, the vacancy agent from your drop down list. On the effective date field, we set the date that it will be published on the website and on the closing date. Uh, the, we set the date, we specify the date that will automatically be removed from our website. Now, fulfillment date must be left blank and it will be automatically uh, populated when a job application will be accepted. So I will not go uh, field by field. We are going to see all the fields by um, during the training. Um, I will be uh, quite quick. So uh, we set the number of employees that we need for this vacancy. Number applied and number accepted will be automatically um, populated by the system. We have the stage, which in this case is a new, a new vacancy. The stat status must be open in order for uh, to be published. We enter if we want the recruitment fee, the fees, salary percent, uh, and then we set the education level and the years of experience of this um, that we require for this vacancy. Now, on the appraisal template. We can create a template uh, of an appraisal using the performance module in order to be used during the assessment process. The templates can be uh, differentiated based on the position or we can create um, a general one, like in our case. And we are going to talk later more about the um, assessment, the appraisal template. Now we also have the survey and this field can only be used if uh, you will purchase the survey module too. And it can be used to create additional questions related to this vacancy. Now we have the notes tab where uh, we can, um, we actually enter um, what we want to be appeared on our website. In this case, if we go to our demo, <clears throat> so I will go back. We can see that this, if I select accountant, we can see that this is the same text, sorry, this is the same text as the one on the notes tab. So here we enter the text that will appear on our um, company's website. 
So we enter the responsibilities, the requirements of this vacancy and so on. On the applicants tab, we can see the applicants who have already applied for this vacancy along with their status. And on the media plan, I will create a record. So on the job site, on the media type job site, we can see that we already have uh, some integrations with these job sites. And um, Excelsis can integrate with any job site, provided that they have an open interface. There is also on the media type, the online media and the newspaper, where you can um, enter some details for your information, for the HR information. Documents tab, we can attach any document related to this vacancy. And then we have the user fields tab, where the HR administrators can create their own user fields to add some extra information uh, related with this vacancy. Now, this is how we can create a vacancy. The next um, form that we would like to see is the applicants form, which contains all the applicants related information. Now, these forms can be automatically generated by the online job application process or uh, an HR administrator can manually enter uh, this information, these forms, by selecting the create record and fill the form of this candidate. So let's see what this form contains. Let's select this one. So we have all the general information of this candidate, first name, last name, gender, and so on. We can see the address, details, work uh, details, salary expectation, current salary, current job title, and so on. We also have the personal tab where we can see some more personal details. The interaction log. Uh, this is uh, where the all the automatic notifications and all the candidate responses uh, can be shown here. So I will select a different um, candidate, which I, I, I'm, I'm sure that it has more information there. Nicole McPherson. So if we go to the interaction log, we can see the whole communication we had with this candidate. And if we select interaction history, we can see all the um, emails sent and received. Sent by the system and received by the applicant. And uh, we can move to the notes tab where we can enter any notes for the, applic uh, for the applicants. It's a free text, um, so we can enter anything that we want. We also have the documents tab where we can upload any documents related with this applicant. And also these um, documents can be sent by email to uh, our colleagues if we have to. And finally, we have a user fields tab, which, as we said earlier, this can be defined by the HR administrators and uh, where if additional information is requested and these fields, this information is not requested by the system. We also have the related information, for which are giving us uh, some additional um, information about this candidate. We have the applicant references, so we can list any references we may have for this applicant. We have the applicant qualification and we can add any qualification based, based on the uh, applicant CV. And uh, let me show you here, we have five types of qualification, academic, professional, language, skill and other, and then you will fill this window and save it to add a qualification. Applicant past experience where we can add details about his uh, past experience. Applicant education. All applicants uh, education records can be entered here. And finally, we have the applicant job applications. And here we can see all the job applications that this applicant has submitted for any vacancy. We can see that Nicole has submitted 
an application for the general uh, open vacancy and the accountant vacancy. Uh, this form is usually generated automatically uh, from the records created under the job applications form. And uh, also an administrator can assign a job application to this applica applicant by selecting the create record button and select the specific vacancy that this candidate has uh, also applied. Now this is the applicant's form. And now we can go to the job applications form. Can I just now, job in there with the, the candidate profile, is there a way if you were to click into a candidate that you could get a, a quick preview of a CV or would you have to go into the documents and, and open them? Thank you for that because that was something that I have just missed, to be honest. Thank you. So I will select Nicole because I know that she has uh, some her CV attached. No, no. OK, so there is this functionality, the show detail, the show preview panel, where by selecting um, the applicants, this is the demo interface and it seems that we do not have anything in their records, but you will be able to see their CVs on the uh, right panel, on the panel. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, but it seems that we do not have uh, the demo has been updated and yeah. Let's say in a kind of similar a similar vein, is there um is there a, a a high level dashboard that shows a summary of how many live vacancies do we have at the moment in the business? Um what's the average kind of time to 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 recruit? Yeah. What's our current what's our current cost of recruitment through job board costs and everything? OK, for uh, these kind of details, we have the recruitment dashboard. I was about to show it uh, to show that later, but we are oh, fine. To show. No, 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 it's fine. Uh, this is the recruitment dashboard. So if your company has many locations, you can select a specific one. Uh, you can also select a specific department, specific organizational unit, or you can leave this blank because in case that you want these details for the whole company. So you want you, first you have to specify the period of this um, the period that you up. So you have to specify the period uh, of time that you want these details to 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 get this information. And as we can see here, we can see that on this period that I have specified, we had eight applicants, fourteen applications. So that means that some applicants who have been applied for more than one application uh, vacancy. Uh, we have recruited 16 persons. We have filled 11 vacancies. It took us 255 days to fill. It's not realistic. This is a demo. And we still have to open vacancies. And below we can see uh, some um, charts, job applications received and hired by month, job applications by open vacancy, these are the two open vacancies that we still have and days to fill uh, these positions. And uh, we can move to the next tab where we can see some more details. So we have the job application status by open vacancy. Job application by status. Uh, OK, I am something's wrong with the demo. It seems, but you will be able to see the job applications by status here. And here, uh, if I click, let's say, on the enter status, I will be able to see the list. Um, does, does that give us does that give us cost per hire as, as well? Um, so if we're, if, if we're saying it cost us X amount to put those roles on these job boards. We wanted six positions. Therefore, when you break it down, the cost for hire is X. Um, um, John, it's, maybe you know uh, the there's, answer here. There's, there's not so much information about about costs okay. because that involves you putting costs in. What you can do is all this information is extractable out to Excel 
Yep. So you can have an external uh, Excel spreadsheet that does that calculation because typically recruitment costs have contain components that aren't held within Excelsis, but you can extract all the relevant bits out of Excelsis yep. and then through, you know, one of your accountants should be able to give you a price per recruitment and how your efficiency is improving or sort of month yep. by month. Yeah, OK, great. Um, Nicoletta, just just to rewind a little bit, you mentioned about references. So. At the point of application, does the applicant put in reference details with the email of that reference? And does the system then go off an email and ask for that reference as part of the application process? Uh, OK, so uh, we're talking about the applicant references, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, the um, candidate will complete the application form and all this data will um, automatically um, field these fields. And what was but your to question? Actually, but yeah. but to, re to, to obtain the reference, do we then have to manually email those references and, and wait for them coming back? Or does the system send off an email to that person oh. to go such and such has given you as a reference, please supply the reference and it comes back into the system? No, automatically no. This is unfortunately yeah. not. Yeah, that's fine. This, yeah. Uh, any other question? Or we yeah, can so move far. to. Not so far. No. Great. So now we can move to job applications. Job application is uh, the link between the applicant's record and the specific vacancy. And uh, using the job applications, uh, you can process a job application as it goes through the various stages of the evaluation cycle. I will open Nicole McPherson just to see the um, job applications form. So we have the vacancy here, and then we have the applicant type. So let me uh, first open a new one. So in case that I would like to create a specific job application, first I would select the vacancy and then I would select the applicant type. If I select employee, then the system will give me a drop down list with all the names, uh, the employee names. And if I select applicant, then the system will give me a drop down list with the applicant's names. And by selecting it, we can see that some fields will be automatically filled. We can say that this uh, applicant is um, available in, let's say, two weeks, and we can again um, fill all the fields. Now, I will open Nicole with our example for today. And we can see uh, the application date, we can see the work status, or we can set the work status. Availability in weeks, availability, any comments, any availability comments, if there are any, and the application status in this case is entered, and the applicant status is reviewed. We are going to talk about the status um, soon. Now let's move to the evaluation tab, which contains various uh, scores to help with, evalu with the evaluating process. We have talked um, previously about the interview assessment, which can be, we can create a template using the performance module, and this can be used during the interview. So in this case, we can see that uh, the interview score is zero. Now, during the interview, I can open the interview assessment and I can rate Nicole. So I will enter some randomly um, some ratings. And if I click save that I can I will be able to see. I think I need to refresh my page, I'm sorry. Nicoletta, all these things down the left hand side, technical ability, knowledge, all that can we they, they're all customizable, are they? Um, uh, can you give me some examples? What are you referring uh, to? So I'm thinking, Leanne, I'm thinking driver recruitment, for example. There might be some specific 
things that we want to delve into be, to to assess uh, a, a driver role that might not follow one of the ones you've got on the left hand side. We, we might want to change one to call it something different. Well, um, these fields, this, the system fields. No, it's uh, kind of hard to uh, change the names that already exist. What you can do though is to create additional fields if you need some additional information that is not given right, by okay. the system. You can create as many user fields as you want, and these user fields can be added if you want to the general tab, evaluation tab, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Now we were talking about the interview score, so I will again open this. And I can write I can write also some comments if I want to. I will click save. And we can see that the interview score has been updated. I haven't finished my uh, assessment, but I mean, this is just for uh, to show you. So I have just entered the, I, 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 I am able to see the interview score during the um, interview of this uh, candidate. And I can also enter some other scores manually if I want to, in order to help me later on when I want to um, filter or um, you know during the process of um, finding the appropriate the perfect candidate um there is also the interview tab where i can set um i can arrange an interview with my colleague who is uh, magdalena let's say because she's the hr manager or she's the manager of the um, department that needs uh, to fill this vacancy so i can set the date and the time and if i click send appointment notification two emails will be sent from the system the one will go to magdalena who is my colleague informing her about this interview and the other one will go to the candidate again informing him or her about this um, interview and can you, for interview confirmation, can you attach documents? In this case, no, from here, no. But you can send uh, email to the candidate if you like. Les, I picked up on you talking about um, SMS earlier as well, technology. Can, can, can an SMS also be sent to the applicant to inform them of, of interview arrangements? Not yet. OK. Documents tab, we can attach any documents and send them if we want by email. Um, using the send document link, we can send this uh, CV, let's say, to the manager of, you know, the department that needs to fill the vacancy. Now, we also have the view related applicant, which if we select it, we can see the applicant's record. That's the record that we have seen um, five or ten minutes ago to see the, all the related details. Uh, for example, we want to see his or her qualifications uh, or past experience and so on. Then we have the view related vacancy, which is actually opening the vacancy form where we can get information about this specific vacancy that this applicant has applied. Um, we have talked about the interview assessment. We can select add notes, which this button actually allows the users to re record any additional notes. And uh, we can print or save and cancel just to leave from this form. And now we can uh, talk about the review and selection process. So can we're you, going to just, use just to jump yeah. in about the applications. Of course. So yeah. Who can see job applications? Can we limit that to just the recruitment team? Sure, sure. Everything is based on permissions, so you can okay. um, permit just the HR or just the recruitment team to mm -hmm. see to view all these job applications. What you can also do is to um, you can, of course, at times to uh, forward some job applications to managers or you know okay. to other colleagues and you can also give permissions to specific employees to have access i mean everything is based on permissions mm -hmm. so you've got a list there of job applications i just want to jump back a little bit to to understand how the system works from a team point of view so a monday morning 
my recruitment team come in and they log on um, and they all kind of work different desks so I've got driver recruiters that work for England a driver recruiter that works for Scotland I've got somebody who looks after just the contact centre when they come in and look at the dashboard how what does it look like to them can they just see their jobs and then they click in or would they all come to this list of job applications well, I guess that the HR of Scotland, you 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 want them to see just the HR vacancies, I guess, right? Yeah, to help them manage their workload rather, you know, if, if they're not, if they're doing driver recruitment, that they don't want to be looking at the contact centre. So is there a dashboard where it can be separate or does, is this the list that they would come to on a, on a Monday morning? Well, it depends on what they want to do. In case, if they want to review um, the job applications, then they have to use this form. If they want to see some information about the applicants, they have to use the applicants form. If they want to create a vacancy, they have to use the vacancies form. Yeah, okay, so Nicoletta, I don't think that's what's being asked. Is oh, sorry. Can, can the list for each individual be narrowed down to just the thing, to just the areas of the business that they specifically deal with. So they don't see the whole universe of yes, all of jobs, yeah. but just narrowed down for their particular job role type that they're recruiting for. Yes, of course. Perfect. I think that, 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 was, that the was the question. The question. Was... <laughs> and, and does it look like that? It's the same, it's the same layout, is it? If it, even if it's scaled down to one specific vacancy. Yes. Should we have a quick, Nicoletta, should we have a quick chat about, about layout? So this is the, this is the old layout of, um, of Excelsis. And at some point it, towards the back of Q1 next year, the layout all the database will stay the same, so all the way that it works will stay the same, but the layout will change and update and be very much more like the like the standard layout that we showed you last week with the much more sort of user friendly approach. So these are the these are the last times you will see sort of pages like this. The pages will be changing and becoming much more friendly in the in the very near future. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, as we said, we are in job applications form and we can see all the job applications that they are divided uh, we, uh, with their status. We can see that there is only one applied, one called for interview. We can see many entered some interview passed and so on. Now, if I want to see um, job applications uh, for a specific vacancy, I can use the filter and I can select here vacancy and here I can write the actual vacancy, which in this case it will be accountant. So I can now see all the job applications uh, related with the vacancy that I have entered in my filter. Now, um, if I want to uh, short the uh, list, I will clear my filter now. So there are some functionalities and let's start with the job applications matching functionality. Where I can select a specific vacancy, I can uh, select the match on position competencies if you will um, enter uh, competencies on each position. So I can select the education level that I want and then the years of experience, I will say more than two years or just two years. And then I can enter a minimum qualification score and then I can select OK. And I don't have anybody with these credentials. Great. So um i will go to job applications matching again i will select the accountant i can enter all these details and what i can also do using this functionality is to say that i want all the job applications that they have the um, interview past status to be changed to their status to be changed to shortlisted let's say 
And if I select OK, uh, then the system will be will automatically change all the job applications with status interview passed. It will change the status to shortlisted. Um, what else? Let's go again to the factions menu. That's the green button here and let's uh, select the job application advanced search. Now again, I will open this up. I will select a specific vacancy. That's the accountant. And then I will select qualifications. So I want to find all the applicants who have this qualifications. I can also select applicant must have all of selected. And in this case, I will select ACA and ACCA. And then I will click OK. All right, and I have five job applications with uh, which satisfy my requirements. I will clear my filter again to see the you know all the job applications and I can also use the filter. If I double click, I can see the advanced filtering window here. So in this case, I will select um, a specific vacancy again, let's say accountant, and then I will select the interview score. So I want all these um, the candidates that they were they had more than 60 on the interview score and then I will click apply. OK, let's do that 50. Or 45. <laughs> and uh, I can also, of course, use all the um, the filtering criteria. I can set the filtering criteria I want using these fields, the available fields on the filtering. For uh, for interview notes, uh, Nicoletta, can can the system be configured that it forces people to put in interview notes and won't let them move any further forward till they've done that? That's not forced, but you can uh, very very easily add as much notes as you like. OK, so but if people choose not to do that, they can still carry on and. Yeah. OK. And can managers submit interview notes onto a record? Yes, if this uh, job application has been forwarded to them, yes, of course, if they have it and it is available to them, yes, of course. Now, if I want to change a, um, a status to someone, I will simply. Um, I there actually there are two ways. The first one is I, I will select that and then I will say set status. And then I will change the status accordingly, or I can select more than one and do the same thing. Set status and again, I will select the new status that I want. Um, also, if I want to change the status of this uh, specific, this one is accepted. Let's find another one. This is entered. Great. So let's say that I have an interview with this applicant that I want to change the status to reviewed or shortlisted. I will simply select the application status from uh, here, general tab application status and then save. Now, uh, we have talked about the interview assessment. Um, if we want to forward the job application to someone, we, we um, right click and then we can select assign to. That could be the manager, right? So we select Elton, who is the manager of this department, and we can write uh, any message here. Please review this job application. And then I can click OK. And um, then the manager or the uh, employee that you have forwarded this job application will receive an email and he will be able to find the applications on the job application for review inbox. This is on the show notification job applications for review. So, for example, John is not just an HR, but he's also a manager. So someone has forwarded some job applications to him and he will be able to view uh, 
the job applications forwarded to him from this window. Will they get a notification into their Outlook, into their emails, or will it only show will, as a notification on the system? Yeah, they will receive an email notification informing them that uh, a job application has been uh, forwarded to them and they need to review it. Okay. Now let's go back to job applications. Now let's talk about sending notifications. Um, we can set the system to say, send automatic notifications when the job application status is um, changed to rejected. So by changing this one to rejected and click save, the system will automatically send an email notification with um, the text that you will define, you know, telling him that I'm sorry, but um, good luck and so on. So we can select also uh, one or more job applications. We can right click and then we can select the send email. And we will be able to select one from the available templates that we have created. For example, the email applicant interview notification, that's the in Greek. So let's select the one in English. Or we can uh, select the email rejected applicant if we have not set the system to send this automatically or the interview acceptance, acceptance notification and so on. Before those templates that, that we can decide what, what they yeah. say and, and, and review the content, can we have attachments saved to those or is it similar to the confirmation of interview? Are we not able to? have documents well, attached. You can enter links if that helps. OK, but we can't attach a PDF or a, um, a Word document to a template. I'm not sure if there is a way. Um, I will ask if that's OK and I will revert. Yeah. Yes, I know that we can add any links, so a PDF is uh, doable, but I will ask about um, Attachments. What sort of documents are you thinking of attaching there? Mm -hmm. Do we have think, a, a, um, a candidate pack? So, you know, an attraction piece that has been done by marketing that, that tells a candidate a bit about us and why you would want to work for us. So okay. we, we currently attach that to emails. Got you. Yeah. Now, there is also the mass mailer functionality. Um, so we can select a vacancy. Well, let's do that. This uh, this functionality can be found under administration, general and mass mailer. So we can select a specific um, vacancy. I will select job applications here, and I want this to be sent to the job applications that were applied for this vacancy. And now the application status is, uh, let's say, interview passed or shortlisted or whatever. And then I can select a specific email template, shortlisted notification, for example. And in this case, if I click send, this will be sent to uh, all the job applications that they have the status shortlisted and these candidates have been applied for this specific vacancy. Now let's go back to job applications. If we want to reject the job application, we open the job application and again we change uh, the status to rejected. Now if we want to accept a job application and we want to uh, actually hire this candidate, what we can do is to, uh, we can set, this is based on a parameter, we can set the system and when we click accepted uh, to a job application, then the system will take all the necessary details that they can uh, find on the applicant's form and the system will automatically create an employee's record. So this is um, how we can create an employee without having to enter the details uh, and the information of this employee again. This will be the all the details will be transferred automatically and the system will create an employee's record.
Now we have talked about the recruitment dashboard. Um, we also have the search recruitment uh, documents. So I will select, I can, I'm, I can select from a specific vacancy. I can select a specific education level, year of experience, minimum qualification score, application status, and then we have the keywords to search for. So if the documents attached uh, by the candidates, by the applicants, to their application form are readable, that's a Word document or readable PDF. The system will search for this keyword that I am writing here, and it will find all the um, job applications that they contain this keyword that I have entered. Any questions? I don't think so. Um, I'm thinking talent pools. So, for example, let's say we have uh, three vacancies for a role, mm -hmm. and uh, we find the ideal candidate that we think is right for the business. But there were another two candidates in there that were, you know, extremely good, but just missed out for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. Can we create? talent pools for those roles in the system that when we next have a vacancy for that role, we can use that as a means of a campaign to those people to say, you know, you interviewed previously with us. We really liked you, you, what you said. We thought you were a good fit. Unfortunately, you missed it on that occasion. We have the role available again. Are you interested in applying again? Yeah. Um... There is not such a functionality right now, John. Let me let me jump in on this. On I suppose this it's either yes, thank you. quickly and on it. It's either putting um, candidates into because it's a question I've written down into a a talent pool or so a separate folder, or can we do codes or tags to candidates so that when we search the database, we can search for a tag. I know I've done that on a system as well. Um, so there's two kind of options of how you can talent pool. Let me let me give you a sort of yes, but here, and it's a, and it's a bit of a trade off that you're going to have to decide on yourself. And that is, yes, you can maintain a database of previously unsuccessful people that are that are uh, that have applied and that you want to perhaps look look at again in the future. And the, your trade off there is with GDPR and the holding of personal person personally identifiable information into the future and the law says that you should only hold such information for as long as is relevant so kind of people after 3 months 6 months 9 months start to have a systematic approach to an to anonymize people that have previously applied. So it's kind of what we would do when we set up the system is work with you guys to get the right length of time that you're not holding um, non employees per PII, but you've still got an active base of people that you can that you can pull again. So it's 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 getting that balance right. And where and John, do we store could it, could, those could candidates? Would, do, do we have to search for those candidates, or you know, say that they are within the the, the time frame that we agree? Yeah. Can we go to a folder that says contact what center you, talent what pool? You, what what you what you likely will have is sort of job profiles for people that you are that that you're that you're recruiting for. So you've got this ideal job profile and you'll have unsuccessful candidates that fit that profile so you'll have a list of people that isn't the global list of everybody but the shorter list of people that fit a specific a job profile so you'll have this shorter list of people that are close but didn't quite make it last time round. And where do you find where would you find those? We're looking at this job application dashboard. You know, where would you find those? Would they be in a folder or would you have to search that criteria to bring up the list? Well, this is a this is a demo system, so we don't have sort of job profiles 
set up on it because it's it's very generic. But you would under job applications, you would have job profiles and that would then give you your list of unsuccessful candidates. Because you must kind of know what a driver looks like, what skills, experience, uh, you know, what what they've got. You've, you're building these profiles for, you know, delivery driver, salesperson, and, you know, sort of engineer, um, you know, I'm just showing my the ignorance of, we're, we're the, of the dairy to... business here. Just try to make things as easy as possible yeah, for exactly. the team where, where everything's really accessible. You know, this year alone, we've had over 40,000 applications come into our ATS. So we are working on volume. Um, so anything that's not big uh -huh. lists or that they can go to easily navigate without spending that time to search is, is um, yeah, really kind of valuable. And that's where the sort of filtering tools are, are really useful in that you can automatically apply a certain amount of filters so when you're getting mass applications you can quickly exclude the ones that are don't fit your even your minimum standards and you can apply that not just to first time applicants but to reapplicants as well so that you're only looking at a list of people that are suitable and don't miss and don't and the ones and you exclude the ones that don't fit the minimum standards that you're looking at just on just pick up what you said there john does does the system flag to you prior employees who are who are applying to you again who for one reason or another you may not want back again OK, that's that's an interesting one. What you um, can do, what you can do in this case is to set your um, the applicants status to rejected, for example. And then you will know because if an applicant has applied for four or six vacancies, he will just have one applicant's record and six job applications. And when you open the job application, you can see that the applicant status has been rejected or blacklisted or anything and you will know that you will not have to spend any time to him yeah there's a, there's another interesting one there and that is a former employee who reapplies that you don't want to offer a job to uh, so with excelsis you pay for live active employees on the system but you don't pay for former employees because as a the hr department needs the largest pool of possible uh of of employees and former employees on which to extract information and data about how employees behave Mm -hmm. So after again, after a certain period of time, an ex employee will have their PII anonymized, but you'll still be able to know that that is an ex employee. And if there is a disciplinary or a note on their file that they are not to be reemployed, then they couldn't turn up again in an applicant list. Yeah. On the PII thing, though, I mean, if we set a limit of six months, could the system trigger a new uh, workflow to ask for consent at that point? Uh, you either you you either do something where you do it as a standard anonymization at a set period, or yeah. you set it as a trigger for somebody to decide whether to anonymize at that point. So it's not an automatic thing where, where the data gets stripped out. It's something yeah. that you decide how you're going to do that, but there'll be an alert notification that drives you to take some action at a specific given period of time that you dictate. Yeah. Okay. Because it is, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to put yourself in a different, 
you know, it, it is this, I can see your your balancing act here is to have a good, strong pool of potential employees, but not to put your, not to put the business into a position where it can be criticised for holding personal information longer than is, uh, longer than is um, seen as appropriate. Yeah, it's a real challenge. It, it you know, it, it's a challenge for everybody. Yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Nicoletta, a quick one. What on the on the on the light interface? Uh, what can managers who are part of the recruitment process? How can they put in comments and 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 things like this into onto a potential recruit? So this is um, a manager in the field who has been asked to comment or be part of a recruitment process on an individual and rather than going into the full system as your HR people will do they get the opportunity to comment and add notes onto a recruitment onto a, re a potential recruit sort of just you just when they're out and about. Perfect. Thank you, John. Yeah. So this is the mobile application and uh, Linda is a manager and she can see from my team the job applications that were sent to her and she needs to review. So let's select this uh, record now. We can see the details of uh, this applicant. We can also see the vacancy, his education level and so on. And then we can see from our mobile device any documents that are attached on this record. And we can also uh, rate, uh, we can also do the interview assessment during the interview from our mobile device. Is this what the dashboard looks like on a desktop to a manager as well? Well, to a manager, oh, okay, let's go to the full user interface then. Um, using the full user interface, just have in mind that always uh, it has more applications, more functionalities. So let's select the job applications for review. In this case, the manager can open this record and the, the system automatically opens also the vacancies form to see the details of this vacancy, the applicants form to see the details of this applicant, and then the job applications for review. And again, he can see all the details, he can see the evaluation rates, he can use the interview assessment uh, functionality, he can arrange an interview to someone else, see the documents attached, add notes, as we uh, you have asked previously, and save the record. But the point is, even if the manager is using the mobile application, he has uh, he's able sorry he he's able to do some functionalities using the job applications uh, functionality in the mobile in his mobile. So just on, on what you showed us on the mobile version, the one here now, can can they can they see the CV of the applicant on that? Yes. They can. On the documents tab. Okay, so if there's a CV being uploaded, that will show there. And the, the licensing agreement gives everybody both access to the light and the full interface. The light yeah. interface is really for, you know, it's it's on a it's on an, a, a tablet or it's on your phone. It's when some a manager is out and about and has to put comments in um, about a particular applicant. But if they're back in the office and they want to do something more powerful then there's always then they all have access to the full interface and the ability to to do things that are are much more powerful it's that mix and match of making sure applications go forward quickly when somebody yep. is out and about and can drop in comments and move things forward it's that it's that sort of accelerating the process so so you don't have to wait until somebody's 
at home in front of their laptop to make to make progress. Yeah, OK. So if we have somebody who we've 10 applications, three interviews, we've chosen our person, we now want to offer them a job. What, what happens now in terms of the digitized onboarding process of for letter, contract of employment, all of that stuff? Well, let's say that you, we have sent the job offer. He has uh, accepted the job offer. Yes. Yes. So what's, All right. the, what's the sort of uh, Nicoletta? What's the onboarding email? That kind of that side of things as well. Perfect. So uh, again, we can send an email uh, related email by. Sorry, to the job uh, to the candidate. So we can send email, we can send him his job offer or any related uh, template that we have created, um, you know, guiding him to his office, to his department and so on. Now, the next move that the HR can do is to use the onboarding checklists so we can create any all these tasks. Uh, for example, we can send to the IT to create his um, desktop. We can uh, create um, a task to the HR or to his manager to give him, you know, his contract to sign and so on. And all these notifications will be sent automatically to the assigned employees. And we can also specify the dates. For example, in this case, that's the creation of email address that has been sent to the IT, which is the, uh, the employee's Christopher. We can write a description, days to notify, uh, so Christopher will be notified two days before uh, the candidate, the new uh, employee will come into the office. So we can write any additional notes and we can attach any additional documents, any documents. And uh, by clicking save, this will be sent automatically. So can we can we preset? So, for example, by job title, can we preset um, the documents that go with a uh, I don't know, a finance accountant's role. These yep. are the documents that get sent to that role. And, and when that workflow goes to IT, we know that that role gets desktop, phone, and access to these three systems. Well, in this it, case, you... Yes, yeah. exa exactly. You can have different workflows for mm -hmm. different locations, yeah. for different job titles, and for different levels of seniority. Yeah. And I think I picked up last time that in terms of signing for it, you, you don't currently have DocuSign, is that right? That is another Q, I believe it's Q1. Um, but yeah. yeah, we are currently integrating DocuSign into the platform for contract of employment, uh, for, for, for contracts of employment. So yeah. by the time that you'd be implementing um, and having a live system, that would be that would be there on the platform, right? But in in the absence of that, just now the person just gets it emailed and it's it's in their inbox and the, and, and right. we just assume it's assume it's been received. What we have now is a tick box acceptance, right? So if somebody needs to do um, health and safety training every year and you need to, or you reissue your uh company um, handbook but you need people to agree that they have written and accepted it there is a there is a checkbox that you can force people to accept and you'd then okay. be able to run a report as to who has accepted who who hasn't accepted yeah so you okay. know so where the where the take up rates were yeah, so for onboarding documents, if there were like four onboarding documents for, for your position and we did a uh, tick box acceptance. So prior to people starting, we could do a by exceptions report to see like, who do we need to follow up who hasn't accepted that yet. Precisely. Yeah. And you could have four different check boxes for the four different documents. So you'd know exactly who is outstanding, what permit, um, what acceptance. Okay, and that's all auditable if people say, no, I didn't accept that. I didn't press the green button. Everything on the system is auditable. Yeah. So irrespective of which bit, holidays, anything, you have a complete audit trail of everything. Yeah. 
OK, uh, I'm just conscious of our time. Uh, was there anything else you were planning to show us, Nicoletta, or is that? Um, us, do you think? Well, John, what about um, shifts or time and attendance? Uh, I mean, yeah. do you want to see sort of shifts, time and attendance? Just have you got another quick couple of moments or? I, or I, I don't think we would. Only, I'm only saying that because we've been trialing a clock in clock out system over the last few weeks, stroke months in the business. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think at this point we would. It might be something that so, um, the Gillian's team has been in, involved in quite heavily. So it might be something that we want to have a further discussion about in terms of how that data gets interfaced, if you like. Sure. I mean, if you've got fixed, I think we had the chat the last time, you've got the fixed sites and they would go in and out via the current system that you're using, which is yep. all which is API driven. The, yeah. the more interesting bit is the soft button for people that are mobile. And that's part of yeah. the that's part of the app. So you could yeah. deploy that on a sort of mixed basis. Yeah. Yeah, it was our canvassers who are out knocking doors. That was the that was the question mark on how do we capture time works for these guys? Yeah, precisely. Yeah, OK. There's a couple of questions from me and, and, and just to understand how it works, it's, it's going back to um, job advertising. Um, I know you said that you can integrate with, with other kind of job boards. Is there a way on there that you can see a list of open job adverts and, and, and where they're posted to? Nicoletta, when somebody's using something like Indeed. Yeah. Can we see what jobs are still open on job boards? And so those are all the job boards that we've currently got, um, that we've currently got um, links that are active. But for anything else, we just build the link and, um, and allow you to get direct access into, into different job boards. So how can I so see a list of, if if got what a adverts are open? I beg your pardon? I just need to know if we can see a list of what job adverts are open. So, you know, midweek, I'll what I'll do, I'll have a quick look on and I'll just check that, you know, adverts aren't live that shouldn't be because, you know, indeed pay per click and things like that and right. checking there's no duplicates. How can we see what adverts are right. open and, and where? On the job sure. site. OK, you will define. I mean, you will define that uh, if you see that the status of the vacancies is open, that means that this is published on your uh, website and automatically will be published to the media plan that you have selected from that you already have an integration with. OK. Yeah. OK, so I'd have to go into each one to see where a recruiter had advertised. So there is the possibility to advertise a vacancy to one job site and another vacancy to another job site. Is that what you're uh, thinking? I just wanted to see how I could get a bit of an overview and a vision of where we're advertising and what's being advertised um, because the recruiters manage their roles themselves. But I have a, an overview, you know, mm -hmm. just just to keep uh, hold of the reins, really. Um, but if I've got, yeah. it, I, I'm presuming from what you've explained there, I'd have to go into each vacancy to have a look. Yeah, I guess. Is there a, Nicoletta, is okay. there a report? For job which, sites. For which, for which jobs are currently open? What are the, what are the reports and what do they show? Well, we have the applicants report uh, the job, okay, and we can select the specific vacancy, so we can see the specific uh, applicants for the specific vacancy. We have the job applications report. Uh, again, we can specify the dates um, to find the specific um, job applications that we want, and then we have the applicants interview evaluation report. I mean. Uh, I get, I'm thinking if we can uh, get this information using the old data, but again, I have to ask um, Kyriakos. Okay, okay. Yeah, let us take that away. There's, there's, there's a lot of information in there. 
I'm just wondering whether um, whether O data and something sort of more more rather than the standard reports, having something like O data will give you a more dynamic view of what's going on at any particular time. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. And another quick one, you mentioned that um, you can go out to agencies. We don't use agencies a lot, but but we do use them and obviously really kind of need to track who they go out to and what comes back in. So I'd be interested to know how that works from our side, but also to understand what an agency would see. Do they have access to a portal that we can manage what vacancies go out and when they upload a candidate? Yeah. Does it drop in to the system? An agency would be would be seen almost as uh, an HR recruitment consultant. So, but they would be locked down in the in the to only see the jobs that they were working on. And could they see candidates that you know our candidates on there, or only the ones that they upload? Only the ones that they were the that they manage the vacancies, the vacancies okay. that match. Yeah, yeah. OK. And if they were to put John Smith in in as a submission, but John Smith has already applied directly, would would John's profile come up as a duplicate for them? Does that get flagged to our team or, or theirs? Or is that something that we would have to manually notice? Well, if John Smith has applied for a vacancy that the um, agency is uh, handling, then the agency will be able to view John Smith's record. But you, uh, again, you will be able to view all the records. How do, how do, how do we know that it's the same person and Nicoletta? And do, does, when we, when we set the system up, is there a prioritization as to who's who gets the who gets control, so to speak, of that particular individual? Yeah, is it always is it always it? the company? Is it the the agent? Because because agents get a bit um, shirty if they mm. think that your that your poach you know you'd need to be able to prove that you've already had prior contact with this person so so that they don't feel as if you're um, stealing their commission. I suppose the yeah. question is, is if they were to submit a candidate, but they're already on our system, would that agency, would it be flagged to them that they have already applied? So it's a duplicate application. Therefore, we will not be taking him on through the agency? Well, um, what I was trying to say previously is that these um, will be seen by the, the vacancy that this candidate will apply for. So the, the agency, it, let's say that there is an agency that has this, um, is, the, is handling the accountant vacancy. So John Smith has been applied for the accountant vacancy. Then the vacancy will be able to view his uh, John's details and John's job application. Or even if he applied directly oh. through our website. Yeah, the, the, well, do you want the agency to have access to the, to the Excelsior system? This no. is no. Uh, no. So All right. right. They, want them to have, they wouldn't want to have our candidates data. They, they, we just want them to be able to submit candidates to a position that we've opened to them for support. A lot of the time, our roles that aren't exclusive to that agency, we would work them as well. Yeah, yeah. And John, you were saying something? Yeah, I mean, if if an account, if if John, say John Smith has previously applied directly um, to McQueen. And then he's submitted for a second time for an agency. Can we make a workflow mm -hmm. that says well, a second application for the yeah. same job via an agent? Um, the agency is told that he is already 
that he's already applied and that and that they're not getting and that they're not get that that he's he isn't under their control how does that work yeah okay uh, so we will we will have to check that and uh, we will revert Thank because you. I thought that he, the I, some companies, they want the agencies to have access to the system. That's why I was confused. Yeah. yeah okay. no, oh no, they, they yeah. will. They will need to have access, but but it's the case where there's the same person applying, uh, uh, the same person applying multiple times by various routes, and mm -hmm. where the priority lies. Okay, okay. So we will revert. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. That's that's great. Thank you very much. I will download the um the the uh, file and put it up on YouTube as 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 the last time. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for your time thank again. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, bye. You too. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.